Yes. All right, we'll get started now. Welcome everybody to the final Austin RB of the year. Thank you for coming out, even right after Thanksgiving. Um, I know that kind of depresses turn out a little bit, but we still got a pretty good crew. Um, tonight we have Mr. Eric Wood, who has come here graciously to show us his Roomba hacking gym. Apparently Yosemite has um, completely destroyed his uh, serial driver stack, so this is not going to be an interactive game, unfortunately. Although maybe we could like throw the room off really high. Yeah, I'll kick it around the room. Yeah, okay. simulate it. We can yeah, we'll play music. <laughs> um, cool. So um, I'm Trevor Rosen. I'm uh, sort of I don't know if we really even have an official power structure of Austin. Maybe I'm part of it. I'm definitely on a Google list that gets me run to um, from people at Capital Factory as they know it. Um, and so I just by virtue of starting a little round the room kind of thing, since we're still small enough to do that. Um, I work at Round 7 on Metasploit, so I work on security and networking stuff. Um, most of the time, big Ruby open source project, a huge gigantic pile of code. We've been hiring all this year, um, but we have uh, one spot left for a uh, very senior engineer. So would that be you? Ask me for a business card, and I will give you a business card. And I will even give you a business card at a bar where I will actually pay for your beer after this. Um, so yeah, that's me. And Eric, why don't you tell us all a little bit about yourself? Yeah, hi, I'm Eric. Uh, I'm the web developer at Spiceworks, and I do a bunch of random uh, Rails-y stuff. Uh, we're hiring, by the way, I'm pretty sure. So <laughs> if you want to learn more about Spiceworks, we're not hiring. What? Yeah, hiring like a dragnet of Ruby developers. Like yeah, pretty much. 60 or 70 a time. You right? want to get caught in that dragnet, just uh, <laughs> possibly <laughs> taking this as hard. And I'd be more than happy to talk about it. We use this podium. So I came here today to talk to you all about. Well, let's, go, let's keep going real fast around the room. Just oh, we're oh, kind of we're doing the introduction. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Sorry, if you don't mind. If that's all the intro that you've got. Yeah, that's really all the intro. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's all the intro. Uh, my name is Mike, also a developer. Um, I work in security also, but I work with uh, phishing and testing. Actually, that's pretty good. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm Michael. I work at Georgia. And uh, while I'm not a Ruby developer, I work primarily in my job with uh, SQL and PHP, but I'm curious about the language and went to school there, so I'm to check out. Cool. Awesome. I'm uh, Jeffrey, I just graduated from the uh, Mega Square program a few weeks ago, so I'm actually for a job. I don't know if I'd love to do it. <laughs> uh, I'm Brian, I graduated from Maker Square a couple months ago. I'm doing the Maker Square uh, Research Fellowship with them, so I'm just enjoying a little bit more in depth and teaching a little bit here and there. Um, mostly, I focus on JavaScript, but I heard we were hacking Roombas, and that sounds really fun and awesome. <laughs> so, <laughs> Uh, but I, I do I do Ruby also and focus on Ruby also. Um, I'm Christina. I'm currently a student at Maker Square. I have a background in math. What's happening? We're just saying we are. What do you do? I'm Ronnie. I do currently I'm doing JavaScript strangely at work, but in Java. <laughs> Uh, I'm Jeffrey. I've been doing Ruby and JavaScript for a while, and until recently I was working on a startup, but running a business is hard, so now I'm looking for work. <laughs> uh, my name's Jeremiah. I'm not a developer, so I'm not much about Ruby. I'm an entrepreneur and founder of a startup here in town, and uh, I was told to use a really good language, and I just came to meet some people, some developers, and friends, I guess. My name's Joseph. I work with Eric at Spiceworks. So I do Ruby on Rails stuff. I just started there about five months ago, and wasn't exposed to Ruby or Rails before that, so still learning and learning a lot. Uh, I'm Nola. I help organize meetings, and I delegate to people. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Well, I'm uh, I've been programming for Ruby for, for nine, nine years, 
I'm not to see right now. Make sure um, Sam, um, I know Noah from another meetup that I uh, run, the closure, and uh, I've been doing Ruby on and off uh, since the 90s. And uh, I just thought it was cool you were going to hack a vacuum cleaner, so mm -hmm. <laughs> I wanted to go up and say it. Proceed. Hey everybody, I'm Eric again. Uh, I'm here to talk to you about uh, Roombas in Ruby. Let me get my slides up. So this talk is going to go over uh, just kind of some of the fundamentals of working with uh, low-level binary stuff uh, with uh, Ruby and uh, applying that to the context of uh, vacuum cleaners, which is pretty great. Um, so. Uh, this is a Roomba. Uh, this is an iRobot Create. It's basically a Roomba, but it's uh, they took the dangerous parts out of it, so it's really just like a robotics platform, no vacuum or anything like that. Uh, you see these a lot in schools and AI labs and whatnot. Uh, it's got like a cool little like a D sub connection here with all this other stuff. But its essence is pretty much the same thing. So the anatomy of a Roomba. It's got buttons, lights, some sensors. Uh, the main thing being this uh, bumper sensor on the front. It's got an IR sensor, uh, 360 degrees on it, uh, so you can talk to remotes. It has these little invisible walls that it won't go through. Uh, and they're just like little IR beams, etc. cetera. Uh, the underside of it, it's got a vacuum, uh, really fast wheels. These things will actually fall ass if you let them. Uh, it can be kind of dangerous. Uh, they can detect cliffs, uh, each of the wheels has uh, a drop sensor on it, so if it tries to go off the stairs, it won't go off the stairs. It's really useful. The idea is you just press the button, it goes and cleans your whole house, because we live in the future. Uh, <laughs> and uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, so <laughs> why are we messing with Roombas and Ruby? Uh, back in college, uh, our professor for senior design gave us these little TI watch things, and they have accelerometers and whatnot, and he's like, make a game with them. Here's four of them. They're terrible, and we couldn't make a game with them. So we we're like, okay, uh, AI Lab down the hall has Roombas. Those are really cool. I wonder if we can steal them for a little bit. And uh, we'll make them fight each other. We kind of hated this professor. It upset him, and so we did that. And uh, yeah, we controlled the Roombas with the watches. And so they have these little lasers on them and whatnot. They have, uh, they're powered by a beagle bone. And then so they have a laser and a laser detector. And uh, stop playing the video. That's me in college. Apologize for that. Really? Played it here. There we go. But you can kind of like turn the watch and control the room. But anyways, so uh, I wanted to hack on that in Ruby, so I did and wrote this little gem. And that's what I'm here to talk about. So supplies. Uh, the Roomba has a little uh, serial connection on it. It's actually a uh, seven pin mini DIN connector. And so you have that on one side, serial on the other. It's kind of a weird cable. Don't go out there and expect to buy that. You have to make your own. Uh, I was fortunate enough that when I got the Create, it comes with a cable. So if you want to borrow that from me sometime in the future, I don't spend all day doing this. So I'd be more than happy to part with it for a little while. Uh, you can make your own. In fact, I linked to some instructions on that at the end. Uh, pretty much all Roomba since 2005 have the little connection and uh, you can talk to them. So uh, Roomba SCI is uh, the serial command interface that the Roomba speak. It's a really simple little protocol. And so the format, uh, it takes in these opcodes and uh, each opcode is a number that corresponds to a function or command that you want the Roomba to perform. And so uh, they can take arguments. They don't necessarily have to have arguments. Each one is an 8-bit unsigned integer. Hold up a minute. Let's talk about binary. So uh, here's the number 10 in binary. Uh, if you're not familiar with binary, each spot is a, uh, the power of 2. Uh, so 2 to the 0 is 1. 2 to the 1 is 2, et cetera. So 2 plus 8, 10. And uh, this is unsigned. There's no information as to whether or not it's positive or negative. It's just the number in base two. Uh, and this is in Big Indian. Uh, this comes in handy later on. Uh, different computer architectures store the number, uh, the order of bytes differently. X86, for example, which you're probably interacting with, is Little Indian. 
Us humans, or me at least, like to think about things in Big Indian where the most significant bit is on the far right side. So uh, this is a Big Indian number, and uh, the Roomba expects Big Indian numbers, but our computers are working in Little India. So byte is eight bits, and in Ruby, a fixed num, uh, just a regular number, is going to be eight bytes. And that gets dynamically resized to a big num behind the scenes, which is 13 bytes. So our first stop code, 128. This has to be sent before anything else. So you turn on the Roomba, and your program sends this op code and says, I'm taking control. I'm going to tell you what to do from now on. And uh, you'll see the lights turn off and everything. And uh, now you have control over it. It doesn't take any arguments, but you have to send that first. There's several different modes uh, the Roomba can be in. It can be off. It can be in passive mode, which is probably the most boring mode, because it doesn't let you work any of the actuators. You can't drive the Roomba. Uh, and this is the default when you turn it on, or at the very least, when you send start. Uh, safe mode. It will defend itself. If you try to send it down the stairs, it will stop itself. Any of the safety mechanisms are still in effect. Full mode, it does not care. You can send it down the stairs, you can do whatever you want. Roomba will not stop you. This is what we're going to work with most of the time. So uh, there's opcodes for setting each of the modes. A typical program, I will say start, and then send uh, a safer full mode. Uh, I've never used 133. It's pretty much useless. And uh, motors, we want to make it go forwards. That's, uh, that's interesting. So uh, the drive opcode takes two arguments. That's going to be the uh, velocity and the radius. So the velocity is made up of two bytes. It's the speed in millimeters per, in, ah, sorry, the speed in millimeters per second. Positive is forward, negative is backwards. And this is a 16-bit signed integer because it can be positive or negative. And uh, it's stored in two's complement, which is a way of encoding whether or not it's positive or negative. You can also have one's complement. I'm not going to go into that, but two's complement is the most common. And uh, radius, the uh, turning radius in millimeters per second. So I don't understand that. I've never used the two of them together. Usually I'm just driving it forwards or backwards. So uh, an example of it. Our goal, to drive in reverse 200 millimeters per second while turning at a radius of 500 millimeters. So velocity, negative 200 is what we want. This is negative 200 in hexadecimal in the correct uh, uh, format. And then we break this up into two separate bytes. Same thing for the radius. And then we send it. So this is the decimal representation of that. 137, the opcode. Then 0xff, which is 255, so on and so forth. And this is what is actually sent over the serial port. And the Aruba will understand that. So we also have access to a ton of different sensors. This is just a cross-section of a few of them. Uh, the interesting ones are going to be the bump sensors, the wheel drops are included in that, uh, virtual wall, uh, stuff like that, maybe button pushes. Uh, so you can request data three different ways. You can query by grouping, and so each sensor has a group. So uh, the physical sensors are grouped together, for example. Uh, I never do this. It makes no sense. It gives you all these sensors you don't care about. The query list makes the most sense. You give it a series of sensors, and it gives you back data for those sensors in the order you requested. Stream is the same as query list, but every 500, I want to say it's either 15 or uh, 50 milliseconds, it gives you uh, a list back. And uh, that way, you don't have to continue to pull it. So uh, here's a section from the documentation. Uh, each one of these is the sensor ID and the name. And then here's what it'll give you back. So uh, bumps and wheel drops. Uh, we'll talk about this later. It has one byte returned in the value is 0 to 31. And the query list, opcode 149. Don't memorize these opcodes, by the way. They're all constants in the library. It's, don't keep track of that. And so you give it the number of packets you're requesting and then a list of packet IDs. So uh, if I want the distance traveled and then the bumper status, I say, hey, I've got two packets and their ID is 19 and 7. And that will return you the information uh, one byte after the other. So let's talk Ruby. That's why you all are here. Talking to the serial port. So rather than learning how to speak RS-232, et cetera, and handling the low-level connections, somebody wrote a gem that does all that, works on Windows, Linux, et cetera. 
And uh, so typically, or at least in the Unix world, uh, in the Windows world, it works a little bit differently, and you can talk to me about that if you want to. Uh, but a uh, serial port, uh, or sorry, the uh, device will mount under slash dev, and uh, depending on the driver, it'll have any number of different names. Uh, the driver I use uh, mounts as TTY USB serial, and so this is just a file you can read from and write to it, just like you would any other device. And so we create a new serial port. We set the baud rate, which is the speed at which it's uh, sending and receiving. Uh, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, I have those listed right here. And then uh, you can read and write from it. Uh, what's interesting is it gives us I, the IO, actually, sorry, it implements the IO module, uh, just like file and pretty much anything else in Ruby that does input and output does. It, yeah. In fact, if we look at the source code for it, it includes the uh, IO header file. This is in the C extensions for it. So anything you can do with the file, you can do with this. So changing formats. Uh, we were talking about all these different uh, binary representations and the numbers that we're sending and receiving. Uh, Ruby doesn't really speak that. We get fixed on big num, et cetera. That doesn't, it's not C. We can't you know, cast tune from that, but we can. And that's cleverly hidden away in the array class under pack. And so what pack does is you give it a template string and you say, this array, I want you to pack everything inside of it with you know, this template. So uh, the template uh, can take, it, it's usually, it's the form of a string with any of these different characters in it. So it could be like, you know, uppercase C for an 8-bit unsigned uh, character. And uh, that's what we're gonna use. So for example, uh, the opcode, if we want to convert that <clears throat> to a format we can send over the serial port, we say, you know, it's an 8-bit unsigned integer array.pack with a directive C, which corresponds to that. And so we say 128 pack C, and this returns a string, and this is Ruby's way of saying that's 80, uh, the hexadecimal 80, which is 128. So our write function, this is kind of the core of the Roomba library for talking back and forth. Uh, I take in strings, uh, numbers, what have you, but the, the main takeaway is calling pack on it and then flattening all the data together and writing it over the serial port. Everything's gonna be interacting with this method for sending data back and forth. So driving, let's implement that in Ruby. So uh, each of the arguments is a 16-bit integer signed and uh, that the, uh, the pack uh, template string for that is s and then the greater than side is a modifier for uh, big Indian telling it you know to convert it that way so uh, we use this method to convert everything to arguments that the uh, Roomba understands and so uh, it's pretty straightforward just check the ranges of everything and then write the drive opcode followed by the two arguments after we convert them Reading sensor data. I'm only gonna go over the sensors list because frankly that's the only one that is actually useful. So our request is the query list, opcode, and then the number of sensors and then the sensors themselves. Uh, I actually cut a couple lines out of this. <clears throat> There's a mapping in the, li uh, in the library where you can use symbol names to refer to the different sensors and I looked that up. So you can actually pass in the IDs or the symbols directly and it knows how to handle that. So uh, for each one, so it goes ahead and writes the request and says, you know, maybe I want uh, seven, which is the, um, the bumper sensor uh, information. And so it goes ahead and writes that. And then it reads from it the uh, sensor packet size for each one. So in the case of the bumper sensor, that's one byte. And so looking it up with the ID, it says, okay, read in one byte. So the serial reads that in, we get the raw data, and then the sensor bytes to packets function actually decodes that into Ruby objects we can interact with. So this is kind of a long method and I cut some of it out, but what it's doing, the gist of it is it's iterating over the packets and it says, hey, each one of these packets, I know how to decode you, so I'm gonna look that up. And it uh, grabs the size of it, the signness, and then it uses array.unpack, which, as you might guess, takes uh, the binary data and converts that back into Ruby objects that we can interact with. And so uh, it'll read in uh, that byte. Uh, actually, we interact with it as a byte, which I'll show you. 
but uh, it can uh, convert it to integers or like Ruby fixed sums, uh, strings, what have you. So, bit masks. This is kind of a lower level programming technique. Uh, the, uh, so remember when I said bumps and wheel drops is one byte? And that's kind of weird because it's a packet that contains all kinds of information in it. <clears throat> Actually, that byte, which is eight bits, each of the bits corresponds to uh, one of those sensors being on or off. So for example, uh, the right bump, just uh, bumping it on the right side, is uh, bit zero. <coughs> So we want to convert those bits into a hash that we can read from and say, you know, refer to each one of those. So we use a bit mask. And the idea is a binary AND with a certain mask will only expose one of the bits. So a binary AND with anything that is zero is going to be zero. It's going to be false. Just because of the nature of it. Both have to be true. So uh, in, this, uh, in this string right here, only the one is going to have any significance. Everything else is going to be zero. So if that returns anything other than zero, we know that bit is true. So we use this to access each one of these bits, kind of like you know masking away everything we don't care about, and then uh, checking it and uh, uh, returning a boolean. So let's make a DSL out of this. Uh, right now, the functions we've defined aren't really useful for everyday usage. Uh, what I want is to be able to interact with it and say, go forward one meter. This is Ruby, after all. We like DSLs. We like overriding native types. Uh, you know, the more like English it is, the better. And uh, so let's write a couple high-level methods. One interesting thing about the Roomba, which I think is kind of an oversight, you can't tell it to go forward a certain distance. Or you, know, you can measure distance over time, but you can't actually say, I want you to move this distance. You can actually write, it has a little like programming language of sorts, you can store a series of commands to execute. And one of those is wait until you've gone a certain distance. But it doesn't give you any information on whether or not it reached that distance. Uh, so you can't block until it completes, etc. So uh, you can read. Uh, there's a sensor packet for uh, reading the distance. Every time you pull that, it'll tell you how far it's gone since you last read it. So what I do is I loop over it and Every time it has sensor information on the distance, uh, read that, add it to the total, and then break if we've gone over. And then each of these is just uh, going positive or negative, the speed. Uh, pretty straightforward. And then uh, we'll monkey patch in stuff to fix num. And so we'll say, you know, and fix num, if you say dot inches, uh, you're referring to, you know, millimeters, so the, the fix num values millimeters, and then we do all the conversions to inches, et cetera. So we can say one dot feet, and that's actually returning, uh, sorry, one dot foot, and that's actually returning the millimeter, the number of millimeters, which is you know probably a bad idea to use this with anything else, but if you're messing with this, it's probably within a small context. This is probably the most Im important piece of code in the entire Program so uh, whenever there's an exception or anything, so say you're like driving forward and you're waiting for like bumper input, you're like, yeah, I have this program that's gonna you know wait for that, and then there's like an exception. Uh, the room is gonna keep going; it doesn't care. You told it to go forward; you didn't tell it to stop. And what this does is it tra uh, th this traps any interrupt. So you know when an exception throws, if I kill the program. <laughs> It's going to stop everything and then power the Roomba off. Otherwise, it'll just keep scooting along the floor, and then you're like, you know, scrambling to keep it from dragging your laptop and all that. This is no good. And uh, let's. <laughs> uh, so I updated to Yosemite recently, and there, I have this USB serial adapter to talk to the Roomba, and it has this driver, and they don't like each other. They don't get along, and so. A little bit before, I've given a variation of this talk before, and uh, I assumed a lot of stuff would still work. And so today I went to go try it all out again, and then it didn't work. So I don't have a demo, uh, and I'm sorry for that. I have like a video of one of the demos I did like a while back. One of them was going to be you can tell it to play notes, and it'll play notes. So I had one where you could like play the keyboard, and it would make sounds so you could like type so that's the closest thing i have to a demo 
Anyways. Uh, hey, Eric, where's the code? Uh, it's on GitHub, actually. I figured the okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. So uh, the code for it is uh, my GitHub username is eric-wood. So it's github.com slash eric-wood slash Roomba. And the, uh, the Ruby Gems name is Roomba. You can go ahead and download that, install it, play around with it. I have to do a release. Once rubygems.org is up, I'll release the most recent code because I made a lot of changes during the making of this presentation. And uh, yeah, any questions? How much does one of those uh, Roomba modules cost? Uh, so the create is, it's only around like a hundred bucks. You can get them used for a few bucks. What's funny is like the actual like robot itself is a big expensive part. The battery is like sought after. So uh, you can actually buy a little uh, like batteries that you can put E cells in and just use disposable batteries with it. Uh, I managed to scrap a battery out of another robot because when you buy this, it doesn't actually cover the battery. So you can get them used or broken real cheap and uh, yeah, scrap something together. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for. Oh, yeah. Well, outside of you know its use as a vacuum, what interesting, what applications might be interesting for a programmable robot? You can make a little piano out of it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, there's there's a lot of uh, cool stuff you can do with AI because it can uh, it can take in sensory information from the outside the world. So I saw the AI people do a lot of work with uh, like yeah, building up an internal model stuff. Uh, Neural network things for solving mazes. Uh, they had they had one thing set up where they would like run into each other and like somehow work out a way to avoid each other and like solve the conflict. Just interesting. They were just running running into each other all day. But uh, yeah, uh, people hack together all kinds of stuff. This one's especially cool because of this port right here. It'll source like at 12 volts. Uh, it's got digital I/O on it, which you can read and write from using the. Uh, the command and stuff, and so uh, for example, you can scrap lasers. We actually control the lasers with the with the onboard uh, GPIO stuff on here. And, uh, yeah, so there's a lot of stuff you can do with it. The Nola Roomba, uh, it's a little less adaptable, but there's some really cool stuff people know. Uh, Where's the GPIO? Right here, but it's only on the uh, robot tree. Oh, really? Yeah. You might be able to unplug the back of three pin serial or something. Or something. Uh, I'm not sure, you may have to take it apart. Yeah, I think you like put it off. Yeah, uh, in fact, if you like took the vacuum out of it, you could probably harness some of that and then use the vacuum to make it spit hard away. So if it can solve a maze, does that mean it can remember where it's been or it has like some kind of map of its path or? Uh, that's up to you. Internally, uh, if I remember correctly, iRobot did a bunch of crazy AI stuff with it and then they found it was less effective than just like spiraling out and doing any kind of like random cleaning. And so I actually don't know if they keep track of where they've been anymore. Uh, funny enough, these are uh, internally it's running some weird form of risk, like a custom thing they did. Because iRobots actually like they do government contract stuff and they make robots that kill people. <laughs> so by all means support them is fine. Yeah exactly. Good thing we support it over. Uh, but they clean up after. Yeah exactly. They're really clean. Uh, yeah. Good awesome. Thanks for coming. And uh, if y'all want to talk to me more about this, if you want to borrow this and you're not running the Xfinity, <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you want to borrow it and then you know leave like uh, your ID with me or something so I can get it back. Uh, yeah, I'd be more than happy to work something out with you that. You really can't buy those <laughs> cables like on data for your smartphone or something like that. No, uh, you might be able to find them on eBay. Uh, I linked to uh, some DIY directions. It's pretty simple. Uh, with a little bit of soldering, just uh, take a part of a little serial cable. You can buy the connectors. Uh, Radio Shack might even have them. It's not an uncommon uh, connector. Yeah, for like $65. You know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You get them on Digi for like dirt cheap, you have to find the right one. But uh, I think they have links in the tutorial. It's not all that hard. Uh, there's, there's actually a whole wealth of information on Roomba hacking online. Do you have uh, uh, some other projects in mind that you're working on? Uh, right now, no, because I've been spending a lot of time just on the library. Uh, but eventually, I would like to 
I'd like to get a little maze solving thing set up and then uh, maybe work with a little AI stuff that I haven't touched since college. Yeah. Yeah. Right now it's just a library. And if anybody wants to help out with it, the code is a little messy uh, and we don't have a test suite. So Why? I think it'd be a lot of fun to figure out how to do a test suite with the Roomba so I don't have to plug it in and like make it drive around to see if things still work. Uh, and just like, you know, mock out this serial port stuff and uh, get that working. Something I haven't tackled before, so that'd be a fun thing to work on. If anybody's like, yeah, <laughs> let's bring in Cafe Bidones and uh, work on that. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks everybody. Thanks. Traditionally, we kind of pair up the code on it, the code for the second half of the week. Um, sometimes we fall off that time, but uh, this time we'll let it go off. Evernote presentation mode. It's a new feature of Evernote. <clears throat> All right. So this is something I thought of last time. Was saying pretty easy. Um, I've always been kind of fascinated about by base number systems like binary. I would like to figure out. I see number one zero one. I'm like oh, see, it's binary five. And I'm not like a super nerd. And my house number was eleven oh one. Like oh okay, it's no nine or whatever. But <clears throat> so I always whenever I see. Like one zero ones, I converted to to decimal. Um, but I thought it'd be fun to write a program that takes two parameters, a base two for base base two for binary, and then a value, and then convert it to the decimal. So uh, there is some pretty much uh, what Eric said, and he kind of did a little a little explanation of converting to uh, like the binary. So here would be, so would this, this be Little Indian? I think it's... Uh, Is it Big Indian? Oh yeah, that's Little Indian. Okay. Yeah. Do you normally read like right to left? Do you want to read on it? Sure. Eric? Just curious. Uh, so yeah, I just, I, well I think of it as reading uh, left to right because it's the uh, smallest one in there. So like one, two, four, so it makes sense to me. Right. Everybody so the opposite of how like all the Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you're just, you're just like back computers. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It makes more sense to me. I, I can't read it the other way. <laughs> it's a problem. So I, I figured out some some values to use for test data. Um, and there's a, a link if you want more explanation about it that I found up there. Um, so you can use Ruby, you can do TDD, you can just do straight code if you don't want to do TDD. Uh, so we actually have a, a little bit extra time. So we can go till uh, to 7 7.40. So let's, let's work till 8.30. And if anybody wants to show off what they've come up with, and uh, we can, you can go have beer with that. And it, we, we usually ask people to pair with somebody they've never paired with before, so don't like pair with your best friend, just say them what you work with, so pair with somebody else. And if you're a new person and you want someone more experienced, then find somebody more experienced. Um, I don't pair with somebody, I don't have a laptop though, so anybody. 